to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it, and this has been like a therapy session. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by Frank Smith. Frank, how's things? All good, all good, mate. I'm a bit burnt and red, as I said to you. It's, uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking too good, but uh, all good. Out in Sri Lanka for a few days. Are, are we looking at a matchroom Sri Lanka event, or is this more of a personal trip? A personal trip. Not yet. Maybe in some in some time. You know. My mum was born in Sri Lanka and I've always wanted to come to Sri Lanka. So I thought I'd I'd make the trip while we had a bit of it's not it's not often we have a few weeks uh with no shows. So I thought I'd make the trip out here. Well, wow, unbelievable. You're always somewhere, Frank. So we'll yeah. we'll get we'll get straight into it. Twenty twenty two review, crazy year for boxing. I'm gonna throw out a few questions. You throw back at me your answers and then we'll we'll go from there. All right. So we'll start it off with male fighter of the year. 2022 who have you got for that uh i think it's hard to beat dimitri bivol with the year he had obviously going out there beating canelo who was who, you know pound for pound number one star in the sport and then off the back of that going and beating uh ramirez as well you know i think it's i think it's very hard to argue anyone else had a, a better better year than him female fighter of the year 2022 female fighter of the year this is probably a bit of a tougher one, to be honest. Uh, I think probably I'd say Alicia Baumgartner for where she came through and then beating Michaela Meyer and, you know, next steps undisputed. Is it hard not to give that to Kitty Taylor at the same time? Yeah, I think you're going to ask event of the year, and I was going to say Casey Taylor to that one. I guess that was coming up at some point. So when you come to that, well, we we'll can... go. We'll go for that for my next question then. Event of the year 2022. And I'm not, I wasn't just talking match room here. I'm talking all in and boxing all 2022. Right. Uh, I, I have to say Taylor Serrano. And I actually was speaking, I was speaking to my missus about it the other day. She didn't come. She was like, everyone talks about Taylor Serrano, like how good it was. And I said, honestly, it was, it was one of the best, not just of our events, one of the best sporting events I've been at because the build up was massive. In the, you know, in the, in the lead up to it, it was such a huge occasion, and it just the atmosphere is. It, you know, we've done events in huge stadiums with, as you know, 70, 80, 90,000 people, but there was something just quite special about that night. So that that wins event of the year, and that's why I, you know, I split it out. Always a fair amount in these situations, Frank. Prospect of the year. Prospect of the year, um, probably. Two, one in the UK, one in the US. I'd say Diego Pacheco had a great year. Um, great finish to the year as well with that with that stoppage on the Estrada Chocolatito card as well. Um, so amazing year for him. Prospects of the year in the UK, I would probably say Dalton Smith, who we've just extended our deal with. I mean, he's probably actually past that stage, actually talking about, you know, he's put beyond that stage now. So um, but yeah, it was a good year for him amongst many others as well. The next one's a tough one, and it's one that maybe like whenever I think of it, it's it's hard to actually pick down an an actual one for this. But I'll throw it at you anyways. Biggest upset of the year, twenty twenty two. Biggest upset of the year, twenty twenty two. There's probably a couple. There's. Upset, yeah. Canelo Bivol was probably an upset in terms of many people's eyes, because a lot of people didn't know what you know what what Bivol was about and what you know what he had to bring to the fight. Obviously, as his promoter in that fight, I always knew. Um, but yeah, that was that was probably the biggest upset, you know, to uh, on the largest scale. I'd say. Is there a feel good story of twenty twenty two for you? Feel good story of twenty twenty two. Um, I feel like I've forgotten everything that happened in 2022. Now you know it's like it's like it was years ago. I know, it's tough when you when you look back, especially when that. you're trying to think back. Or, um, I guess moments like you know, like Lee Wood 
uh, and I get on really well with Michael Conlon, but Lee Wood coming back and winning that fight, you know, that that as well, that was an amazing event. And uh, that was a huge moment for him because he's worked so hard and he's really, he's done it in a tough way. And, you know, he obviously beat Kanzu and then in the fight against Conlon, just what, what a comeback in there. But I, I'll come back to the feel-good one. Yeah, it's hard trying to think back to 12 months ago now, isn't it? I know, it is actually tough when you think My about memory the memory goes three months ago. I know, everything going on at the same time. Is there a moment of 2022 whenever you sat and went, wow, we've really done this? In terms of matchroom, as in, like, because you especially, you don't really look at the, not saying that you don't look at the fight aspect, but you're more about the event and what's going on around you. And I know you've referred to Taylor Serrano, but is there anything else that sticks in your mind? I just think uh, we we put together a promo video at the end of the year that we released on New Year's Eve, which was everything we've delivered throughout the year. And that's when I look at it and go, look, we've had we had ups and downs last year. You know, we had we had some tough times as well. Um, but I think when you look at the consistency and the events we deliver time after time all around the world, you know, we launched in new markets, whether it was Australia, Abu Dhabi, which is an exciting market for us. Um that 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 was a great start for us. And, you know, so many huge shows back to back, whether it was Taylor Serrano running into Canelo Bivol, you know, you had Paul Dina against Agawa, what a, what a what a knockout there. You know, it was just so many moments throughout the year. And only when you watch back those videos do you realise, you know, the scale of what we're doing week in, week out. Um, so I think that that really brought it home for me. This one's a, a bit tougher, so you need to, I think you kind of need to put your Eddie Hearn hat on here, but it, it, there's no point in me asking you promoter of the year because you feel like you are the promoter of the year, of course, right? So put your mind in the state that you're someone who doesn't maybe watch boxing every week. Tell me the reason why Matchroom for 2022 outdone all the competitors. Uh, okay, this is me saying it to someone else, so I don't get a load of stick for talking about Yeah. Myself. Um, exactly. Yeah, I, I just think, like I said there, you look at the back-to-back -back events we deliver all around the world, week in, week out, the scale of them, the size of them, sold-out arenas, sold-out stadiums, back-to-back. -back. You know, I think, you know, we have competitors in individual markets, obviously, but no one is doing what we're doing for the sport of boxing on a global scale. Um, and I think, like, you know, like I just went through uh, a moment ago, those just those fights I mentioned are huge, you know, and we're doing it all over the world every weekend. Um, so like for, for me, you only have to print out a box record of 35 shows and look at the quality on it. Um, you know, I saw some numbers around like I think we had something like 60, 50 or 60 world title fights. You know, we had undisputed, just, just the numbers are insane across all of the shows. Um, and you know. We're doing that back to back all around the world and delivering it to the highest level. Sum up 2022 in a sentence for me. Tough but exciting. I, I like that one. Obviously, looking forward to 2023. Give me an outlandish prediction of what it looks like for a match room. Uh... I think 2023 is even bigger. You know, just the plans we're working on now, we're getting ready to, you know, roll out details of the schedule and, and you know, everything we've got lined up. There's so much. Again, I'm not the man who sits here and tells you all the secrets that we've got lined up for the for the whole year, but we're looking you know, all the way through to December, planning out, you know, a structure of what we're going to do, what we're going to deliver for the fighters. And I'm very excited by it. You know, we had a great year last year and I think this year is going to be even bigger. I think we're going to see some, Huge fights this year. You know, uh, AJ's got some massive nights lined up. You know, looking at some big nights for Canelo as well. Um, and, you know, a, a whole host of events all around the world. So I, I'm very excited by what's coming. But like I say, I'm the wrong man to get all the, the, the information out of. Well, I actually disagree with that because you are the man to give me the information now after in Phoenix. You give me that, that exclusive about um, the England night. That unfortunately didn't didn't go your way in the end, but you did give me that exclusive to be fair. It was to be fair, that was a great moment of 2022. Not the, the result of the game, but just I think we had about seven or eight thousand people in there for the football. It was I mean, the atmosphere was unbelievable. If we would have won, I don't think, you know, 
I think there would have been a few pints going around, but it was uh, we managed to we managed to save it by putting marching on together straight after we lost, and everyone everyone stayed in a good mood. Fortunately, twenty twenty three. I know you can't give me too much information, but what does the first half of the year look like without telling me too much? Without telling you too much, it just looks stacked back to back. You know, I think we've got we're looking at about sixteen odd shows, seventeen shows that we're working through now for the first sort of half of the year. Um, you know, obviously quiet in January. January is always a bit of a tougher time, you know, especially selling tickets as well. Fighters don't really like training as much over Christmas is the reality. So or certain fighters. And and there was other shows already lined up, especially in the UK. So we thought, you know, best to start in February and then and then got a, a solid run of shows all around the world running from that we're putting together now for February to June. Um, and it's, uh, like I say, even bigger than last year. One show that's been, I think it's been, you haven't announced it yet, but it's been announced basically is New York on the 4th of February. It, all the information's out there. Um, the only male fight that's been announced is Richardson Hitchens. But, well, I say announced being touted, um, but there's no opponent yet. Is it going to be a heavily stacked female card? Is that the way that, that card's looking? I'm hearing rumours there's a show on February 4th, I've been told. Um I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I haven't got all the details yet. They, they don't tell me just in case I'm a blubber it out to you on here. But um, no, it's, it's going to be a lot of female fights on there, but male fights as well. It's going to be, you know, you've got Richardson Hitchens on there, as you say, um, a, and a big fight for uh, Reshat Matty as well on that card, amongst others. So yeah, that that should be out there officially very soon. How, how soon's very soon? Are we talking like this week? Hopefully this week, yeah. Well, de- no, definitely okay. this week. Sorry, definitely this week. Yeah. And when you when you say back to back, will you be going back to back in the US, then straight after New York, or will you be back to the UK after that? It looks like back to the back to the UK. Hopefully after that. Um. So yeah, just trying to plan out. Like I say, you know, we look at we try and build out a schedule for five or six months. Sometimes it takes a bit longer because you're trying to fit all the pieces in. Um, but that's what we're working through now with the zone to get, you know, the the best best possible schedule out there. You know, you've obviously got the return of AJ, which people are excited for as well. Um, so, yeah, no, all, all, all looking positive. On the AJ thing, do you think that in 2023 we will see Fury AJ happen? I think either that or Deontay Wilder. Okay, so what one of those you're predicting? I think so. Yeah, I don't think too much about the the Fury stuff because every day he changes his mind on whether he's going to fight AJ, whether he's going to, you know, w- whether he's going to retire. So you sort of just let that float along in the background. And if it happens, you know, ultimately we all want to, we do all want to see that fight, um, but we have to manage AJ, AJ's career in a way that you know delivers for him and not thinking about other people and what their plans are of you know so i do i would like to see the fury fight happen um and i definitely think it will happen you know i definitely think it will i think it's too big not to happen um you know uh you know he's obviously focused on the usic fight first we'll see what happens there but you know the the wilder fight's a massive fight for me as well what what's the type of fight that you could see aj back in first off in 2023? Uh, I think he's got, you know, ultim- ultimately we need to plot out a plan that gives him the ability with the team, with his team to to, to rebuild. Um, you know, he's coming off the back of two very tough fights against Alexander Usyk, you know, who in the second fight, he, he really did improve. And and I think he put in a great performance. Um, and now he needs, now he needs a fight that he can build back on, build back on from. And then, you know, maybe we look at the Dillian White fight after that as well. You know, that's a fight that everyone's very interested in, is, is a massive UK fight. And then that builds into the p- potential of a, like I say, a Wilder or a Fury type fight. Do you think that we'll see you bank Ben in 2023? Yes. So you're, you're saying categorically you think that fight will happen in 2023? Obviously, there's nothing out yet about Conor Ben's ban I'm, or not yeah. ban. I believe, yeah, I believe that fight will happen in 2023, for sure. How do you think that, that Eubank Smith goes? Obviously, you know both very well. Uh, 
I think, as as family of Eubank. I said to Liam Smith the other day, I got no reason, you know. Now, now we don't promote him. I can't, I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't support him. So, um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a really entertaining fight. You know, obviously Liam coming up to one sixty for the first time, I think it is, in his career. Um, you know, Chris at his natural weight of one sixty, but I think, it, I think they both, they both haven't got any quit in them. Those two. So I think he's going to be a really entertaining fight. What do you make of the Conor Ben social media stuff over the past couple of weeks? Do you think that, that this looks like we will get a decision soon? And do you think that will be in Conor Ben's favour? Uh, look, yeah, I think Conor has been, you know, going through this for a long time now. Um, you know, and he's he's had to deal with a lot. Um, I think he wants some closure on the situation. He's shared all the details he needs to share, you know, and more um, to, to get to the bottom of this case. And, yeah, hopefully we'll see some see some positive news for him soon. Um, you know, like I say, everything's been shared across. Connor can't do anything more at this at this stage. You know, he he the, the truth is he could he could go and fight tomorrow somewhere in the way, you know, but the reality is he could go and fight tomorrow if he wanted to fight. He wants to clear his name. You know, he's fully focused and committed on clearing his name. That's the biggest fight he's got right now. Um, and hopefully we get some news on it soon. Like I say, he's he's done all he can. And now it's, you know, now it's with the, the WBC and VADA to, to follow up on. Dalton Smith signed for Matchroom a couple of weeks ago. How big is that for Matchroom to get his signature over the line? Yeah, massive. Look, a lot of people were interested in Dalton Smith. He's a he's a tremendous fighter, a tremendous talent. And I think he's got a lot to offer. You know, sells a load of tickets in Sheffield, um, and you know he's he's not just limiting himself to the British scene. He wants to go on and win world titles. He wants the big fights. That was something that came up often in the discussions we were having with him. And you know, having worked with him since his debut, it was important for us that that we kept you know kept with him. And uh, you know, kept building, and we we see huge opportunity with Dalton over the next few years, um, and you know, would love the plan, you know, to sell out Hillsborough in time as well. So that's that's what we're all focused on, focused on doing, you know, and hope hopefully we can get there. But very excited to get that over the line. You know, working with Sean O'Toole, Paul Reilly at STN as well, and and Grant, his dad. You know, he's got a great team behind him, and I think we can go on and do you know deliver like we've shown on multiple occasions with other fighters and you know, keep building his profile and keep building that story around him. And other news, Lawrence O'Coley, obviously it's came out that he will fight on Sky. I believe it's a one fight deal. Do you have any comment to make on that? Because does he still have a an outstanding fight with Matra? Yeah, look, that's that's ongoing that's ongoing legal discussions there. Um I won't really comment too much on it, but yes, he does still have that. But you know, we won't go into too much detail. We'll let other people deal with it. Crow Park, Kitty Taylor, how far are we on with that? Uh, yeah, we're we're working through it. You know, we we are looking at other options as well. Um, I think we have to see how things play out. There's, it's it's not it's not the easiest thing we've tried to do. I'll be honest, in comparison to other venues of similar sizes around the world that we've that we've worked in. But but let's see. We're fully fully focused on delivering that fight for Casey Taylor. We're fully focused on bringing Casey Taylor back to back to Dublin. Um, she deserves it. She deserves that opportunity. And you know, she'd sell out anyway. I think she'd sell out about ten times over. When you know, I I I actually I came to Dublin. I think it, it was earlier. It was if it was about six months ago. And I remember just speaking to people, and everyone was like, "This is that you would you because you don't live here, you won't understand the magnitude of this." But you know, I think even the the weigh-ins, the workouts, the press conferences, you know, what we're going to see there, the the attendance there is going to be something special as well. I genuinely believe, and I say this as an Irish man, that Kitty Taylor would sell a Crow Park shadow boxing, and that that I'm not even joking. I think if if you promoted Kitty Taylor shadow boxing and Crow Park, she would sell it out. So maybe, we should, have to have maybe we should do that as well. Be like yeah, a maths absolutely. We can do math, yeah. you know, we can what? do that in the afternoon <laughs> and then on to the flight in the evening. I, I think that's the plan, mate. I think you need to do it. I'll leave you with one more and then I'll let you go and enjoy the Sri Lankan sunshine. Other than that's the last AK. thing I need. <laughs> I <can> <laughs>
<laughs> other other than Fury, AJ, and, and Ben Eubank, give me one more fight you want to make in 2023. One more fight I would like to make. I would like to see Bivol Canelo again at 168. In Mexico? Uh, or, or Vegas as well. Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I'll I'll give you I'll give you the one I want to see, and hopefully that you, can, you this sticks in your mind and it'll happen. Michael Conlon, Lee Wood. I've, I've had a power cut. A power cut. It's happened power. at the perfect time. <laughs> no, well, actually, that fight is a great fight. Also, Josh Warrington, Lee Wood, you know, all those fights. There's and Maurizio Lara. There's so many interesting fights. There you go. We're back again. There's so <laughs> there's so many uh interesting fights in that division. So, but yeah, I agree with you. That fight's massive. Well, Frank, thanks very much for your time. Get back to the, the sunbathing and hopefully you can turn that bit a bit of a tan. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. <laughs> See if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session.